everybody welcome to the channel i haven't made a video in quite a while but i'm gonna go ahead and make a video that i believe is kind of overdue and that is um how to train a coon dog and i mean solo and that means without other dogs to run with that means running your dog by itself um first for starters you're gonna want to pick up some some form of coon scent like i got this um i don't necessarily recommend that but i did start my pup with that you're gonna want to grab yourself like a reflective collar reflective collars are a huge plus and especially at night and these nylon material collars they're almost indestructible i mean your dog's not busting this collar to save its life you know um another thing you're going to want to grab is you want to grab one of these leashes um in the same material um i would i do have the collars but they're not the, um they're on the dogs the double clip with the little slip ring and what that allows you to do is to have this end into a loop around a tree and this end onto your dog or vice versa. Um, these hand, these collars are super, super handy. I wouldn't hunt with any other collar besides the ones that are set up just like that. Get the ones with the splitters or a couple of dogs. I also going to want to grab some lights. Lights are, this is all you need. Shine a tree. This one has a um, red lens. You can buy this right at Walmart for like 60 bucks. 2200 looms a couple of different modes brightnesses really handy light um this one's the same difference this is about 30 bucks at walmart i hunted with this for a while fortunately the charger broke but you you get the idea you know light leash dog collars coon scent um so let's jump into this coon dogs only need three things and how you get those three things a lot of people are argue over but bottom line is you need three things to make a coon dog. You need bark, track, and tree. That's it. Um, if your dog will bark at a coon, it will track a coon, it will tree a coon, you have a coon dog. Um, any three of those missing, you don't have a coon dog. Dog don't bark, even if it can track and tree. It's not going to bark at the tree. It's not going to bark on the track. You're not going to find the coon. Um, if it can't track, it's not going to make it to the tree. And if it can't tree, it doesn't matter if it can track or bark because it's never going to find a tree. So those are your three puzzle pieces, bark, track, and tree. Um, I'm going to break these videos up probably into breaking down barking, tracking, and treeing. How to get your dog there. Because um, it is very in-depth and it's very touchy on dependent on the dog. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into the, the first portion is the barking part. Okay, So typically... The number one thing when you get a pup, um, everybody wants to put a handle on them or they tell you to put commands on them and uh, make sure they're walking good on the leash and have all their commands down. The only thing that I teach my dogs up until three months old is how to come come back. Um, they only learn, return, they're like, come here. That's the only thing that they learn. Um, I'm That is one of the biggest mistakes I made on one of my one of my favorite dogs i could just never get him to recall because um, i totally blew past that didn't even think about it and i paid for it with my legs in the woods so putting the recall putting come as a command on your dog is uh just impossible to do without okay so but we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about what people always tell you. They want to imprint the scent on the dog. You want to get them familiar with the coon scent. They, you run them drags and mess around with them as they're a puppy. That's all fine and dandy. And that's accurate information. That's it's what you want to do. You want to make sure that they're familiarized with the scent. Um, some people want their pups trained like hot dogs or let them treat cats or do stuff like this. Um, my way, and this is from experience, and with well thought ahead. Okay, so I get my pup. My pup gets a stuffed animal toy, a larger stuffed animal toy, and it gets doused in coon scent. Now, this is my puppy's toy, and the reason for it being a stuffed animal and not a dummy drag or not a hide or something of that nature is because I'm trying to prepare the puppy to visualize kind of the size of a coon that they are going to see. Um, associate that kind of size and that kind of you know figure with the coon scent and then you get that to be the puppy's toy and the sooner you can get your puppy barking at that toy now this is the biggest key right here is your bark you, i mean that's the thing that 
really makes a coon dog is their bark. Um, how I get the bark out of my pups, at least for up until my pups have made it to the cage coon and made it to hunting in the woods, I, I try to abstain from, um, from scolding them for barking, okay? Because um, pups can get put off. Pups can get really put off. Uh, maybe just go hush on you and not bark at all. Um, they'll look at you like, I'm not going to bark for you because you've been, you know, scolding me and punishing me for barking. So at very least until you get the barks out of them that you need to start the training process, I would not, I would shy away from um, punishing them for barking. Um, so you get the coon scent, you get the toy, and you, and you get, uh, cut it on a nice chunk of string, and you can play that, play around the house with your dog, why it's super little, play, uh, you know, hide it on the counter, see if it'll bark for it, just different stuff, just try to get it really involved in wanting to play with that toy, so playtime is only that toy, um, they do whatever they want with that toy, they tear that toy up, they can do whatever, just replace it, and keep that, um, keep it fresh with coon scent for them. Um, when I store that toy, it's either hung on the back of a door, hung up on the window, set up on the counter, or up on the refrigerator. And that is for the reason if they want to look for the toy, they're going to have to look in the air. And they'll have to climb up onto, you know, the cabinets or the, the fridge or the uh, door in a training position to get to that. So that's kind of just instilling a little bit of an instinct in them to always look up for that scent. Um, which coon hounds are really good in that sense where they, they naturally look up. Especially if they got a lot of tree dog bred into them. But we're going to talk about the barking. Okay, so we there's a couple few different ways at different age stages and maybe different um, cycles of your puppy. Um, in the house, just rough housing with the puppy with that stuffed animal can get them to start barking at it playfully and stuff like that but you want to encourage that and praise that um for barking at that um like putting it up on stuff while they're playing with it get them to tree it um can't miss that step when we're talking about this early stage stuff or prior to starting any coon hound training most important is the bark you have to get that bark first because last thing that you want to do is have your dog running um, running a drag and just waiting at the tree and not barking or you know you, your dog has to has a bark and you have to encourage the bark and you have to praise it for the bark and the more that you let your puppy bark the the sooner that they will develop and feel out their own voice um, you know a lot of people say oh they just got to find their voice they're not locating um, or they're getting their locate mixed up, they're chopping first, they're balling on track, you know, it's just all up in the air. But what it really boils down to is a lot of these pups, they don't get to use their voice as much as they should to find it. And then um, some pups are more shy about it and it would take a good long time before you actually hear their real, their real let loose mouth. And getting a pup to feel comfortable letting loose and let their, uh, let their lungs rip is really good for them. Um, Another tactic that I've used, and this is this uh, this is the one that I express to everybody if they're having problems with this. Isn't and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, if you have a coon hound that's never been corrected on barking, um, if you leash it up to something, or you put it on a chain, or you put it in its kennel, or you put it in its cage, or wherever you put it, but we're specifically going to talk about leashing it back or, or putting it on a tie down. Um, when you leave that dog starts barking okay so if you have a dog that's not wanting to give you the bark for playing this is how you get them and trick them into barking at it, the coon scent and the, you leash them back to a tree you leash them out to a tie out you put them on a chain and you just go away and once they start barking you let them bark some dogs might yip 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 just a little bit here or there might take them you know 20 30 minutes before they really start letting their mouth go and really start chopping at it um, once they start setting in on a good a good solid chop or a ball um, and you know they're really letting her loose then you show up you show up with your coon scent on your toy 
and you go up to the dog, you let them smell it. And what I do is I'll place it just out of reach where they can't barely reach it. They can just, you know, about that far from their nose and take off again. They'll start barking. You check them, look at them through the window, see if they're barking at that. If they're not, go out there, play with the toy with them for a little bit and just keep repeating that process. And eventually what's going to happen is that dog is going to quit barking for you and it's going to start barking at that toy. And once it starts barking at that toy, you're, you're, you've accomplished it. Now, you just need to praise it and praise it and praise it for barking at that object, at that toy with the scent on it because this is what we're instilling in them. Bark when you smell this. Bark when you smell this. And this is just laying the pre-ground structure for your dog to, to, you know, let off his horn every time he smells a coon. And it would be kind of natural to them because they've done did it their whole lives because you have trained them in the process. But that's a really good way to coax it out of them. Um, and if you're having issues with pups barking at a cage coon, if you're having an issue with pups barking at a dead coon, if you're having issues with pups barking in general, leash them back. Maybe stand just far enough off where they can see you where they'll start barking. Once they start barking, then you've got them. You don't have to coax it out of them. You ain't got to be mad at them. You ain't got to be angry with them because um, they'll do it. Um, some dogs, if they've been punished too much, they just they just won't. They're not going to let it rip. I mean, um, another big tip that I'm going to put in here, and some people aren't going to agree with me, but um, ever since I was a kid, I was always told, um, hold food. Okay, so if you're doing training or you're hunting your dog, don't feed them that day. At least don't feed them on time. Feed them after you're done. Say, let's say you got a feed schedule, your dog's getting fed every day at 3 o'clock, but you want to train at 5. Um, don't feed your dog at 3. Hold the feed. They're way more mouthy and they're way more into it and they got way more food drive in them when they ain't got no food in their belly. And they'll, they're... It's almost night and day in some dogs how much drive they'll have if they would skipped a meal. Um, and it's not that they're skipping it for the whole day. It's just they're skipping it until you're done hunting them that night or until you're done training them that day. Um, now, I know some people preach uh, the opposite of that where they want you to fill your dog up. Well, there's a lot of problems that can happen if you run a dog on a full belly or you, you train the dog on a full belly and the coon hounds get float. Um, you can cause your dog to be sick. You can cause your dog to, you know, puke up all its food or uh, turn its stomach over. There's a lot of things that I don't agree with. I won't feed my dogs a full belly before I take them hunting or before I uh, start training on them and getting them into a lot of exercise and activity. But that's going to wrap up that first part and that's going to be getting the bark out of your dog. You guys got any questions, just drop a comment down below. Um, and we're going to teach you how to solo a pup and i'm going to teach you how to solo a pup a way you probably never even thought of or you ain't never heard about but uh thanks for stopping by